At the same time, there are growing concerns about the future of Hong Kong's media after the closure of Apple Daily and the arrest of its editors. The Hong Kong Journalists Association says that it expects greater self-censorship among news organizations. Officials have repeatedly said that media freedoms are respected, but not absolute. Roland Lim with this report. The free wheeling ways of Hong Kong's media scene may be at an end, with the demise of tabloid Apple Daily. And many won't be surprised if more news outlets are targeted. Ronson Chan is the deputy assignment editor at online portal Stand News. I still believe that we, our work and also the Journalist Association work, the Labour Union, we, what we've done are under the, the law and which is legal. And, and I don't think that I have committed any crime. But of course I won't shock if one day the police go outside, just the, door, the company door outside to, to say that we, uh, they, they have to search us. Stand News along with another outlet, HK01, and TV broadcaster Cable TV have been singled out by pro-Beijing Federation of Trade Unions Chairman Stanley Ng for proactively encouraging or serving as platforms for anti-China forces. Mr Chan, who also chairs the local journalists association, says for now he's not changing his editorial stance. The freedom of press in Hong Kong today is fragile, out, um, but we still believe that Hong Kong needs um, need news, needs journalists and need truth and facts. So we are trying our heart to, to safeguard it. The recent arrests of Apple Daily Editor-in-Chief Ryan Law and several others for alleged collusion with foreign forces are related to the publication of articles, some which date back to 2019. It's the first time authorities are taking aim at media reports under the National Security Law, enacted back in June last year. And according to journalism lecturer Grace Leung, the media industry is still trying to figure out the red lines. They are talking about, oh, there's a lot of articles. They are colluding the foreign influence. But we, we don't know what kind of article or what type, types of topic that can be treated as proper, but which one will be violating the law. So, and then we even don't know whether that is a only news report or whether that is a commentary. Reporters tried to get answers from Chief Executive Carrie Lam this week, who insisted that the arrests wasn't suppression of press freedom. What is normal journalistic work? I think you are in a better position uh, to, uh, to uh, answer that question. I can only say uh, what is um, breaching the law based on the advice from my enforcement uh, authorities as well as the Department of Justice. What activities or acts uh, will be suspected of bridging the laws of Hong Kong, including the national security law. Uh, and the law is very well defined. But against the climate of uncertainty and concern that the law could one day be used against reporters, the usual refrain has been self-censorship. Activists, academics and others are also less willing to speak openly or to continue as newspaper columnists or to provide political commentary. Ms. Leung believes that foreign media is also walking a tightrope. At present, at least, they still allow um, uh, this kind of uh, coexistence uh, for foreign media and local media. But we also observe that actually they are using administrative measures to tighten uh, the involvement of um, foreign correspondents in Hong Kong. So, like they uh, did not renew the visa for certain journalists. Most in the media industry are taking a wait-and-see approach while learning to navigate the new environment. The Hong Kong Journalists Association is calling on authorities to protect press freedom, which is enshrined under the basic law, in order that reporters continue to do their work without fear. Roland Lim, CNA, Hong Kong.